What's going on? Your boy David is back with NBA Knowledge, and as you guys have heard, Russell Westbrook is no longer a member of the Washington Wizards and now is on the Los Angeles Lakers. And in this video, we're going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly of this transaction. But before we go any further, make sure you drop a like and comment your opinions down below. Do not forget to put us on post notifications as well to stay up to date with the latest post on this channel. But without further ado, let's get back to the topic at hand and talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Russell Westbrook on the Los Angeles Lakers. Now let's start off with a positive note and talk about the good. The good of this transaction is that you have added a guy that is an all-NBA to all-star caliber player in Russell Westbrook, who is coming off of one of his better seasons of his career, averaging a triple-double for the fourth time in his career. It's crazy how Russell Westbrook has made triple-doubles essentially meaningless in the NBA, and he's turned it into clockwork, averaging a triple-double for multiple seasons. I mean, think about this. Just last decade, we never thought Oscar Robertson's record would ever be broken of averaging a triple-double because we just looked at the 60s and said the game was played differently, high pace, and all of that stuff. But now Russell Westbrook has done it not only once, not only twice, but four times. That is insane and it speaks to Russell Westbrook's effort, his drive, and just how impactful he is in multiple facets of the game. And when you're adding him on a team with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, the first benefit is rest because when you have a guy like LeBron who is entering the later stages of his career, it's very obvious he's going to retire in LA. He needs to have as much rest and as much less responsibility on the team as possible. And if that means focusing on more being a scorer or just being an off-ball player and letting other people handle the ball handling responsibilities then so be it and Russell Westbrook can definitely alleviate some of that pressure off of LeBron James and I know that we've said that about LeBron in the past and sometimes he doesn't really deliver but in this case LeBron kind of has to play off of Russell Westbrook more because Russ as an off-ball player doesn't really work out and I believe that LeBron as an off-ball player will work way better than Russ having to play off of LeBron and when you throw in the fact that AD also is injury prone yeah that's something else that you have to consider you have to give both of them less responsibilities in the offense and having a guy like Russell Westbrook that can be there on the nights that LeBron and AD can't give 100% or just can't play in its entirety is definitely a positive for this team. Another thing good about this is that Russell Westbrook is from LA because when you look at Russell Westbrook him being from that place should give him motivation to not only play at his best but to finally change his game to fit others. This is probably the last chance that Russell Westbrook has to play with players of this caliber. When is he ever going to get the opportunity to play with a guy like LeBron James or Anthony Davis, especially a guy like Anthony Davis? Yes, LeBron is a great player, arguably the best player in the game, but a guy like Anthony Davis, let's just be honest here, He's the guy that's going to be there when LeBron starts to really decline, so Russell Westbrook really needs to build chemistry with him, and Russ has never really played with a legitimate great big man. I mean, honestly, the best big that he's ever played with is Steven Adams, and for a guy like Russell Westbrook, who is a great ball handler in the pick and roll, I definitely think that playing with Anthony Davis is more beneficial for Russ than playing with LeBron James. And when you factor in that Russell Westbrook, even on the defensive end, can give a whole lot more effort because he doesn't have to do too much offensively, I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if Russ even gets some all defensive team votes and maybe even makes one of those teams because when Russ actually gives effort on the defensive end, he's a more than capable defender. I would even say a borderline elite defender but as far as all of the good that's really where it stops let's just transition into the bad for starters health Russell Westbrook is not always the most healthy player in the league and that has affected a lot of his seasons for starters when you look at last year that stretch that he had in the beginning of the year it was really affected by the fact that he played through some of those injuries and obviously he didn't really play that well I believe in the first 20 games, he shot below 41 to 42% from the field, and a lot of people were questioning if Russell Westbrook was done in the league as being a superstar. But obviously, he proved us wrong, and in that second half of the season, balled the hell out and got the Wizards into the playoffs through the play-in. But as far as the rest of the bad, there really isn't that much, so let's just transition into the ugly because there is a lot of ugly. Because for starters, let's just address the elephant in the room, 
The fit is not good at all, and considering that the Lakers are really capped out, their next options to surround these three are through veteran minimum contracts. And sure, I definitely believe they're going to be able to snag a shooter or two, but to be honest, when you have Russell Westbrook and LeBron James on the court alone, much less adding Anthony Davis into the equation, who's also somewhat of a shooter but still is not a consistent one to be guarded and to stretch the floor consistently yeah there's definitely going to be some spacing issues i mean ironically the lakers are the ones who really exposed how to beat a team with russell westbrook on it because let's not forget what happened in the bubble and how they essentially just left him open by sagging off of him on the perimeter which essentially forced him to shoot those jump shots because we all know russell westbrook he's gonna take those shots. And speaking of taking those shots, Russell Westbrook is not a great decision maker, especially come postseason time, which really makes me question why LeBron James wants him. Because I even remember an interview from Magic Johnson about why LeBron James wanted a guy like Rajon Rondo, and it's because of his IQ. And that makes me even question more why LeBron wants a guy like Russell Westbrook, because in late games, Russell Westbrook's IQ is very questionable. I'm talking about just terrible passes that lead to terrible turnovers that change momentum of the games, bad shots in the worst possible moments, and just not being able to pace himself. We all know the criticism of Russell Westbrook, and that stuff has not changed. Even last year in the playoffs, I believe Russell Westbrook shot 33% in the series against the Philadelphia 76ers. And then to add on to the fact that he's a bad decision maker, a terrible playoff performer with a horrendous playoff resume that I I don't have to read because we all know it, Russell Westbrook is also not a great free throw shooter. And just imagine you have a guy that is not great off the ball, he's gonna have to have the ball in his hands the majority of the time because LeBron's the better option to play off of Russ instead of Russ playing off of LeBron. And then to cap it off, Russell Westbrook and LeBron are not great free throw shooters. Russ over the last four years has shot below 70% at the free throw line two out of those last four seasons, including last year where he shot 65% at the free throw line. So in terms of the fit, I genuinely think this was probably the worst scenario that they could put themselves in. But to wrap up this video, let me leave you guys with this. All three of these guys are very talented. And it's very clear that when the Lakers made this move, they had two things in mind. For starters, to get a star player to alleviate pressure off of LeBron and AD because it's very obvious that their bodies are just not holding up at this point. And secondly, it's obvious that the Lakers want to load up on star power to combat the Brooklyn Nets because when you have a guy like LeBron James, especially in a city like the Los Angeles area, on a team like the Los Angeles Lakers, it's always championship or bust. And despite the buck winning the championship the nets are the favorites for a reason and it's because they are loaded on star power so if you're the los angeles lakers why not try to one up that or at least make it an equal playing field by adding a star on your team so that way the nets don't have an advantage when it comes to that so yeah those are just my thoughts and my opinions on this transaction if you ask me if it's going to be a positive or negative i gotta say positive because they have the expectations to at least get to the nba finals and whether this is a super team or not they have to live up to those expectations so hopefully it works out for the Lakers because I am rooting for Russell Westbrook to get his first championship and for LeBron to get five but that's just my opinion you guys let me know your opinions down below in the comment section and also do not forget to drop a like on this video subscribe to NBA knowledge and press the bell for post notifications this is your boy David signing out y'all have a blessed day peace